Welcome back for another live tutorial. I am so excited about this one today. We're going to teach you how to draw this cute kitty in Procreate. Um, let me talk a little bit about the brushes that you guys are gonna need. So I created these fur and fluff brushes. It's a set of 17 brushes for making five different unique um, fur textures. You kind of see some of the fur textures in the background. Um, but you can get these brushes for free at bardobrush.com slash free. So if you don't have them yet, I would go download them. Um, we're going to be using them very extensively <laughs> in this tutorial. So you're going to want to have these brushes. Um, so we'll give that a couple minutes, but I'm really, really excited to teach you guys um, about drawing this cat and teaching you about how to draw fur because fur is one of those things that seems really daunting. Like I, speaking personally, I we're doing um, Animals Month for Making Art Every Day, which is the drawing challenge I run. And I decided to do a week on furry animals and I thought that would be really cool. I'll do a fur tutorial. But fur has always intimidated me. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, okay, let's figure this out. How can we draw fur? And I was like, oh, well, if I had this brush that could do this, that would make it much easier. And that's kind of how these brushes came to be. So I learned how to draw a brush. <laughs> I learned how to draw fur. I made these brushes so that we can all be able to draw fur easily and it's not so scary. So go ahead and get those and um, bardobrush.com slash free. Um, I just wanted to give a quick introduction in case there's anybody new here. Um, I am Lisa Bardot. I am an artist, illustrator, a teacher, a brush maker, and all around creative person. Um, I I love to teach people. I love people helping. I love helping people find their creativity. And most of what I do is teaching people how to draw on the iPad. So I'm also a mom. Those are my kids, and I love color. If you know me at all, if you know one thing about me, you probably know that I love color. So, <laughs> um, I'm also the owner of Bardo Brush, where I make really awesome brushes for Procreate, which you'll get a little bit taste of those today um, as we draw with fur with the fur brush set. Um, and this is a little preview of what we're going to be drawing today. So it's this fluffy kitty. So I'm going to be teaching you how we're going to set up the structure of the cat. We're going to color it in and do the fur. I'm really excited to show you how to do these eyes. Um, for some of the details, I'm going to be using brushes from my gouache paint box, one brush in fact, which is Painty Round. And uh, you can actually get that brush for free. It's a part of Procreate's All-Star Brush Pack that they released uh, during the holidays. It's got a bunch of brushes from all amazing brush creators. Um, so that one brush is in that set and I put a link to that in the description, but if you look up Procreate All Star, you'll find it. And so, I'm adding a link right now. So you and guys Jeff's adding a link that. right now. <laughs> so, so this is the kitty that we're doing today. So all the brushes we're using today are completely free. Yeah, we're not going to be using anything that's not free. I think the only thing is like I did these shadows using one of the other gouache paint box, paint box brushes, but yeah, everything else is free. So, all right, and. I wanted to tell you guys really quick before we get started is I just launched a week ago my new, my first Skillshare class. Um, I was really nervous about doing a Skillshare class because it's like kind of like longer format, more in depth, but you guys know I like to go in depth with my tutorials. So it felt really good to, to finally get a class on Skillshare. So it's all about how, how to draw fur. It goes into a lot of the fundamentals and it gives you three illustrations to walk through to teach you how to draw fur. So if you wanna check that out, you can. I have a link in the description. I'm sure Jeff will share it. Um, and if you go through that link, you get two weeks of Skillshare for free. So it's a great chance to try it out and see if you like it. I really love Skillshare as a platform just because there's so much there and the teachers put a lot of work into making these really like in-depth classes with lots of resources and projects and things like that. So I think it's definitely worth it. So check that out and let's get started. That was a lot of intro. Thanks for sticking around. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump oops, into Procreate. There we go. Okay, so, and I just wanted to say before we get started, if you're having questions about anything, um, you can put a question in the comments, and my wonderful husband, Jeff, is there manning the comments and everything back there, so he's typing in stuff to you guys, um, and if there's something related to what I'm drawing, he'll ask it as I'm drawing it, and if it's something other than that, like if it's about 
me or creativity or whatever other procreate stuff, we'll do a Q&A towards the end, okay? So throw up those questions and we will get them answered. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and create a new canvas. And we're, we're gonna start with, this is like my favorite size, which is 38, whoops, <laughs> tapped on the wrong thing. Strike that. Don't you hate like, un, like uh, delete, okay. <laughs> I didn't wanna do that. All right, plus sign. Uh, my favorite size is 3,800 by 2,800 pixels. Um, so if you follow me, I would create a template for that because um, I use it a lot. But 3,800 by 2,800 pixels is the size I'm gonna be using today. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start with a sketch of our cat. So I like to use a pencil brush for my sketches. I'm just gonna go to my pencil box set and grab my Bardo pencil, it's my favorite pencil. Um, you can use any sketching brush you want um, or pencil brush or whatever you want. Procreate has a bunch. And I'm gonna get like a kind of medium darkish gray. Okay, and um, I'm gonna start just by laying out kind of the ground of where the cat will sit. So what I'm doing is I just drew a line across and I didn't lift up my pencil and it makes like a straight line here. This is called quick line. And if you put another finger down, it, it becomes like perfectly straight like that. So that's just to kind of give us a foundation that the sketch will sit on top of. And what I've done here is I've kind of broken the cat shape down into basic shapes. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna start with basic shapes and then we're gonna work to a more detailed illustration. And I also wanted to mention that this tutorial might run a little longer than our usual tutorials, but if you don't get to stick around for the whole thing, I'll be saving it to my website. It'll also be on YouTube. And I'm sorry, what size was the canvas so I know? 20, uh, 3,800 by 2,800 pixels. All right, next we're gonna draw a triangle. Something kind of like that. This is gonna be the body of the cat. Um, like the tail's gonna be here and the head's gonna be here. So just draw a triangle, kind of like that. The proportions of your drawing will, might be a little bit different than my drawing, but that's okay because we're drawing an, a stylized cat. It's not like super realistic. So I think it's really cool if the proportions are different than what they normally be. And then we're gonna chop the top and the side off like that. And you can come in with an eraser. I just have the same brush for my eraser. You can use whatever you want for eraser. Just kind of loosely get rid of that. This is a really rough sketch, so don't worry if it's messy. And then this is gonna be where the head's gonna go, so I'm gonna just draw a circle. And this is going to be the body, so I'm just gonna kinda round it out just roughly real quick. Make like a bean shape inside of that, okay? And then the feet are gonna sit right under the head. So I'm just gonna kind of just draw a little line to guide me straight down. And then this is where the feet are gonna go. We're just setting up like basic where, this is a kind of like a structure that we're setting up. And then we need a tail. So you can draw whatever tail shape you want. Just a line is fine for now. And this is kind of like the basic form of the cat. Uh, we're I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna work on the face. Okay, um, so this is the point where I'm gonna draw some lines like this to kind of give the um, circle some dimension, or some shape. <laughs> so this, I always draw like with faces and things like that, I draw like a, a cross kind of thing on it like that. And depending on which direction you draw this line, like if you draw it this way, he's gonna look like he's looking that way. And if you draw it this way, he's gonna look like he's looking that way. So I'm gonna make him look that direction. So I'll draw a line like that. And then for the other line, if I draw it like this, he's gonna look like he's looking up. This is where the nose is gonna be when we get there. And if I draw a line like this, he's gonna look like he's, oops, he's gonna look like he's pointing that way. So that's how you can kind of control which direction the head is looking. And for this one, I'm gonna do it up a little bit like that. And like I said, right here is where the nose is gonna be. So I'm gonna draw a circle, and this is gonna be like the muzzle, the snout. I don't know what's called on a cat. <laughs> um, the muzzle, I think it's a muzzle on a dog. I don't know if the same on the cat. Like the mouth and the nose and stuff. Um, and then we're gonna, this is also a 3D shape that kind of sticks up off the face of the cat. So we're gonna do that same like thing with the lines like that. 
It is commonly referred to as the tip of the snout. Okay, it's a snout. Um, hmm. It can be called, uh, or the renarium. Oh, well, I'm not going to remember that, so snout works. <laughs> Okay, so um, this line that I just drew is giving some volume to this snout shape. Monarium. No, I don't know. I'm going to try. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So if you can imagine, like, this is a 3D shape, the nose is going to be kind of like that. Are you with me? And then this is going to be the um, mouth. So that one goes all the way to there, and that one kind of disappears off to that side. So there's some like foreshortening, which is um, when things look shorter because of the angle you're looking at them at. Um, so that's what we're going to do there. And then we're also going to add some eyes. And for the eyes, I'm just going to draw some big circles for now. And the shape and, or the size of the eyes are totally up to you. I'm giving my cat like these gigantic eyes because I think they look really cool. Um, so there's one eye. And then the other eye kind of is hidden a little bit behind the nose. So I'm going to draw a circle kind of like that. They should be pretty similar in size, but this side kind of like falls off that way. And these kind of things, like how to make the eye, like where to put it in between things, these definitely come with lots and lots of practice. So that's kind of why I know like where exactly the eye goes and stuff like that. But you can kind of use mine as a guide. And that's all I'm going to do for the eyes for now. And I'm going to add some ears. And the ears kind of stick straight up like that. And the other one's about right there. So that's all I'm going to do for the ears for now. All right. And if you have questions, Jeff will call them out. I'm happy to repeat things if I need to. Um, okay, so this is going to be the foot, or the, the two legs. So this one's going to kind of come in, a, in at an angle. Let me draw that again. Okay, and then it's going to also come, that's a little bit big. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is not realistic. Um, in fact, let me, let me move that over just a little bit as I go ahead and perfect it. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> okay, and then for the feet, this is kind of hard to see. If I maybe erase it a little bit so you can see it better. Um, this is how I like to do my cat feet. I kind of make like a shape that goes whoop, up and then down like that. That's how I do my feet. So it's kind of like a, like a rainbow that's a little bit pointing up that way. And then the other leg is going to come down like that. You only see a little bit of it. So something like that. And you can make the legs bigger or the feet bigger if you want. It's totally up to you. All the proportions of things. If you want them to have really big feet, you could do that. But I like little, like, dainty little kitty feet. Um, if I want to make them a little bit bigger, you could just do this. Use your transform tool and do that like that. So, totally up to you. And then... Um, or, well, we'll do, do the cattail. I think that's pretty good. We're going to go ahead and do a refined sketch now. So this is kind of like our basic sketch where we're laying out where everything's going to go. And then I'm going to create another sketch where it's more refined and it has like the actual shapes and stuff that I'm going to use. Do you have streamline on on that brush? Uh, this brush has a little bit of streamline. It's at about 40%. Um, you, can, you can turn this up and this will help make your lines up smoother and less like... If you have a shaky hand, it kind of helps smooth things out. So that's a good tip. Okay. So we're going to go to our layers. We are going to go to this little N. And uh, this little slider is for the opacity, which makes it like more see-through. So we're just going to turn that like way down until we can barely see it. Something like that. And then we're going to tap the plus sign. And that's going to create a new layer. And then we can go ahead and refine this drawing and you can start anywhere you want for this I think I'll start with the face oh you know what I forgot one thing I wanted to add to this drawing before we do the refined sketch so I'm going to go back to that first layer is I want the kitty to have these like kind of puffed out cheek areas little fluffy cheeks because the cat head kind of goes out like that so I'm just going to draw these little circles right there that's on the first layer the one that I had done all that First sketch on. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, back to layer two. 
Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started with our cat. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a cat nose, which a cat nose kind of looks like, like a T-bone steak. <laughs> um, and I am going to just sketch in this little muzzle, or no, snout. <laughs> area and then for the eyes they kind of they the cat eyes are kind of at an angle like this so I'm drawing these lines to help guide me when I make the eyes more of that like cat eye shape and less circular like an almond shape so and I'm I'm keeping it pretty circular but it does come to a point a little bit and you can make them really round like that or you can make them like less round it's totally up to you like how round you want them to be uh, and then over here on this one, we kind of have to imagine here because it's behind the nose. And then this eye is going to, this one's a little weird because it kind of sticks off the side of his head, but bear with me. We can always refine it later, okay? I moved that one down just a little bit because it's, it's a little weird. Okay. <laughs> and then... Um, just gonna sketch in some pupils. And the thing with the pupils is you want them to kind of be at the same up and down. Like if this one was tilted more, they'd look, this one is a little bit tilted more. They look a little bit weird. We don't have to worry about it too much until we do like our final drawing, but there's, there's the eyes. Okay, <laughs> let's do the head. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of flatten out the top of the head just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come down around the little chubby cheeks and then they've got like the puffed out chest area and the leg and then I'm gonna draw like a little swoopy like that on the leg because the that's that's kind of like the cat has a lot of hair near his like cat elbow <laughs> so that's what that is and then I'll draw the feet so this will come around Pardon me. Okay. And Maybe I forgot. You should drink that tea, Lisa. I know. You guys always comment. I don't. I'm just busy drawing and talking. Okay. We'll give you a moment to catch up. Um, <laughs> I forgot this other foot here, too. And this foot is going to be mostly buried under the kitty's, like, coat. So maybe that's too far out. Hold on. Let me draw the body first, and that'll make it easier. So it kind of is just going to, like, stick out like that. That's all you can see. That makes it, that'll make it a little bit easier to draw this whole thing too. All right, let's go back over here. And we'll kind of, I'm not gonna make it stick out that far. You kind of wanna look at both and imagine how big you want that side to be. But I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll get, we'll do the body kind of like that. Look at the little butt, it's so cute. <laughs> for this we're gonna make the tail puff out so I'm slowly gonna make this end bigger okay it's kind of wonky you can come around and fix it if you need to so something like that it doesn't have to be perfect we're gonna fur it up so yeah it's kind of weird but <laughs> okay the ears they're kind of a little bit rounded at the top and then like the sides of the ears, we'll do like that. All right, and there's a kitty sketch. So I'm gonna leave that up for just a second. Um, do we have any questions before we move on to the next part, Jeff? I will drink some tea. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, ready? And people are saying, slow down, Lisa, you're so dang fast. Ah, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to. The beauty of it is, guys, is this will always be live for you to watch later. So yeah. please take your time, pause, um, you know, take this at your pace if you need to. Yeah, absolutely. And if your sketch comes out a little wonky, like this, okay, so if you go through this tutorial and it doesn't come out like you want it to, do it again. Like it's it's all about practice, like going through and doing this multiple times. Like, you guys, I've drawn this cat many times now <laughs> in preparation for this tutorial. So that's why it's going to come out like I'm able to do it so much faster and easier like 
I've practiced a lot. So if you do it a bunch of times, you're going to be able to do that as well. So don't feel bad if it's not coming out the way you want. It does take practice, but I hope that this tutorial helps. Okay, let's continue. We're going to go up to layers. We can turn off that first layer. We don't need it. We are going to reduce the opacity of this layer. It's about 18%. I'm also gonna set the blend mode, which are these like things down here, to multiply. And this is all just make it so it's easier for me to see it as I'm coloring it in. Okay, and the other thing that we're gonna do, because this cat is like mostly white, um, is we are going to set the background color now. And I am going to use this beautiful blue. Nice bright blue, that's the color that I've chosen. You can do whatever color you want for your background. Um, I just really love this color, so. And it goes really well with the cat's eyes. It really brings out his eyes, so. <laughs> okay, now we're going to draw in the shapes of the cat and like separate things out onto layers. So for the color, I'm gonna choose kind of like, um, I'm over here in like an orangish, orangish hue. And this color has almost, it's almost white, but it has a little bit of color and a little bit of darkness. If you go over to value, you can see that a little bit more clearly, like it has 8% saturation and 93% darkness. So it's really close to white, but not. And we're gonna go over to brushes now, and I'm gonna go to the fur and fluff set. And I'm gonna choose the shaper brush. And this brush I made specifically um, for drawing shapes. It's got a nice soft edge with a little bit of texture and it's really nice for drawing shapes. That's what I made it for. So, and you'll want to adjust the size because the larger it is, the more, like, that's huge. I'm not on the right layer. <laughs> okay, we need to create a new layer. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm actually going to put this new layer below the sketch layer. I always keep my sketch on top, that way it's always visible for me to reference as I'm drawing my final piece, okay? Um, so as I was saying, we're using the shaper brush. If it's really big, it's gonna be very soft like that. Um, so you wanna do it smaller and you'll have a little bit more control. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going in and just coloring it in. And it doesn't have to be super perfect because we're gonna change all these edges when we add fur. So for this layer, we're gonna do the whole cat body and tail. So his head, oops. We're gonna do its head and the, dish, and the tail. So I'm kind of just going around the edges like that. The harder you press, the bigger your brush stroke will be. I want to do that. The harder you press, the bigger your brush stroke will be. So I've kind of got a light, light touch as I'm going around. You can also make the brush size smaller, but if you make it too small, this edge won't be so soft. So just something to keep in mind. This, the bigger the brush, the softer the edge is gonna be. The lighter you touch, the smaller the brush size is going to be. All right, I'm gonna color that all in. Okay, all right, so that's one layer. It's the tail and the cat body. Now we're going to create other layers for the other things, like the legs and the ears and the snout. <laughs> um, so, and because these things are overlapping, that's why we're gonna put them on another layer. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new layer. Go to the layers menu, tap the plus sign. I'm actually going to turn off visibility of the body layer just by tapping this little plus sign here. And that just makes it easier for me to see this leg because if I had this on, I can't really see what I'm doing because it's all in the same color. So I'm just gonna turn that off. So we're gonna do this leg right now. And what brush are we on again, Lisa? We're using the Shaper brush from the fluff, Fur and Fluff set. Shaper, it's the one at the top. I put it at the top because you use it first. <laughs> I try to organize my brush sets in semi the order that you use them, like shape making brushes are at the top uh, or ones that you use all the time are at the top and then like detail stuff's kind of towards the bottom. All right, so I've got a leg 
And I can put other things on this layer as long as they don't touch. So anything that's going to be like on top of this body layer, like the little snout, I'm gonna draw that in. And that I'm just gonna do as like a circle. Okay. All right, so the only th two things on this new layer are the leg and the snout. And now I'm going to create another new layer so I hit the plus sign and then I'm going to move this layer behind the cat body and this layer is going to be for anything that is behind the cat body like this leg see how it's behind this one these ears so that's what's going to go into this layer so let's start let's take it from the top we'll do the ears okay down here doesn't matter because it'll be behind the cat body. I could do this for all of it matters. Doesn't matter. <laughs> what well, this is the only part that's gonna show up here. So just color in those ears. All right, we've got some ears. Perfect. Let's do this leg. I'm gonna make my brush size a wee bit smaller. All right. Now we've got a leg and this little foot that you can barely see. All right. Okay, so now we've got all our shapes drawn. And we'll come back to things like the eyes and the nose in a little bit later. Um, we're going to work on like the fur and the body and stuff like that. Okay, I'm going to actually... It, it's bugging me that it's not like centered. <laughs> so I'm going to move everything down. You don't need to do this, but I am. I usually move my sketch to exactly where I want before I start drawing things, but I forgot to. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do, the next step in the process is to get these edges, all these edges to look furry and fluffy. So we're going to go to the brushes and we're going to go to, we're going to use the combed brushes. So these three. Uh, to add this texture. There's different brushes for different textures and I show you how to use these other ones um, in my Skillshare class, but for today, we're just gonna be using the combed brushes. So choose the first one, there's dark and there's light, but we're gonna choose the first one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around the edges and just draw in some fur texture. And if you, not on the right layer. All right, make sure you're on the cat body layer. That's important that you're on the right layer. So make sure you go to the cat body layer. And I just wanna show you real quick. Let me make the brush bigger. So these brushes, they, they are meant to make fur. And these are kind of the strokes that come out of them. And the motion that I'm using is kind of this like, shoop, shoop, shoop. I have a little bit more pressure and like less at the end. And I kind of vary up. I do like a little curve. If you do it really straight, I mean, that could be good for certain things. It just kind of depends. So I just want to let you guys know the motions that I'm doing. Now I'm going to undo all that. Okay, so now I want to establish the direction of the fur. So the cat's tail whew, is going to go like that. Um, so I'm just going to add some edge. And then what I'm basically doing is like blending away this soft edge and making it a furry edge like that. So I'm just doing lots of strokes. Kind of these ones, I'm kind of going out like that a little bit. If you go in, then it's gonna look like this, like the fur is curving in like that. But if you go out, you'll see the ends of the fur, like the ends of the hairs. And I think that's the look that I want for this cat. So I'm kind of going like this, out. And what layer are we on right now with this? Very important, you're on the cat body layer. So the one with the tail and the body. Make sure you're on the layer of the shape that you're making, doing the edge texture. So I'm just going around the whole edge of this tail. Zoom in so you can see. And I'm adding fur down here, it's a little. See, sometimes it's easy if you turn your canvas. And as we're getting closer to the tail, it's maybe like less fluffy, so I can adjust the brush size a little bit so it's easier to control it. And they're, if they're like shorter hairs or thinner hairs or whatever. Adjust the brush size, that'll help. All right, I kinda got a tail. Basically you wanna get rid of that sh that hard, it's soft, but that like hard, that smooth edge and make it fluffy. 
The harder you press, the bigger your strokes are gonna be. So that's another way you can control. All right, so there is the tail. And you can go around and add more. The more you make the fluff like stick out, the fluffier it's gonna look. So it's up to you like how much fluff you wanna add. Like if I add more like this, it's gonna look more fluffy. It's totally up to you. All right, let's do the body now. So I think the tail looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the body. I'm gonna make the brush size a teeny bit bigger. And then I don't want the body to look too fluffy because a lot of the hair is kind of just down on his back. So I'm just kind of like adding little strokes like that, just a little bit. Not as fluffy as I did here. Here they like really stick out, here they don't so much. If you want it to be fluffier, you can make them stick out more. And then um, I'm stopping here because I'm gonna come up here now to the chest. And I think the chest is gonna be pretty fluffy. I, I'm basing this illustration off of a ragdoll cat, the breed ragdoll. Um, so they're fluffy, they're fluffy. If you millennials remember the movie Homeward Bound, Sassy is a ragdoll cat. Unless I'm wrong about that. She looks like one. <laughs> um, but I don't know that much about cats, so. <laughs> okay, I have, to, I have to be honest. I'm not a cat person at all. I was trying to find something cat-like to like put over here on the side of for you guys because I always try to decorate. And this Lego of a cat, this is like a Duplo. From my, this is my kids. That's the only cat thing I had in my whole house. <laughs> we have a dog. <laughs> where, where are my dog people at <laughs> oh boy okay so i'm just kind of adding more fur texture here and which fur brush are we on right now we're still using combed yeah combed. combed just not darker light just combed darker light have some um special effects that change a lightness or darkness hence the names but combed is just like your standard brush flat color nothing okay so we've got a fluffy chest, fluffy back, fluffy tail, and a fluffy face. Um, so I'm gonna fluffify that just a little bit. I don't know, maybe I can make this more fluffy if I want. It's all your call how fluffy you want it to be. So for the cat head, there is something you wanna keep in mind because the cat, like all their hair kind of emanates from the nose, so it's gonna go like that, like that, like that, but then like also down. So you gotta be thinking about like which way the hair would naturally go. Using references is great. I'm gonna actually pull up a reference in a minute um, so we can get the coloring of this cat right. Um, so definitely always use a reference. I think it's great unless you like have intimate knowledge of cat fur. <laughs> you just really know a lot about cat fur. Um, references are great. I am going to turn off the ear layer because I can't really see what I'm doing right here. So I'm going to turn that layer off and that'll make it easier for me to see. So like I said, the hair is going to come here. So I'm just going to kind of do this. And then the kind of, you know, cat like their ears, hair kind of goes into their ears a little bit. I don't know. Just like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then this one's going to come around this way. So I'm going to kind of and then maybe I'll do some hair going up. <laughs> he looks a little scrappy right there. That's fine. You could make their hair really messy. Like, I think this looks a little messy. And you could do that all over it. And it could be like an alley cat. Like, kind of a little scrappy. Okay. Uh, I think this is pretty good for the body. So I'm going to move on and do the other parts now. So let's start with this layer with the ears. So I'm turning that back on. So again, we're moving layers now to the layer with the ears and the back paw and then the like, or the back front paw and the hind paw. <laughs> okay, and here the cat's ears, like they don't have a lot of hair. So I'm just gonna make the brush size a bit smaller and just add some really small strokes. Not, not much, not like the tail or like the rest of the cat. So that's how you can control like how much, how hairy they look. So there we go. 
not a lot on the ears. I'm gonna go do this one. And the cat ear, the hair goes up. So that's why I'm doing the strokes up. And edge texture is very important for anything, any type of texture you want. If you want something to look like it's textures, be sh textured, be sure the edges match that texture. Because if this was smooth all the way around and I added a bunch of cat hair, it would look totally weird. So edge texture is important. Okay, this one here. So we'll just same, I'm using that small size again. And then for here, I'm just kind of doing some curved ones around the foot. I like that, just a little bit of fluff. Not even very much at the bottom because the, they're sitting on their paws. They're not gonna like look like a bunch of hair sticking out. So that's all I did there, just a little bit on that foot. So when we were painting on the feet, which layer were we on? We're on, well, my layers are different names, but it's the layer that had this foot, the ears, and then this foot that's in the back, the hind foot. Okay, now I'm gonna move on. I'll, I'll just, so you can still see that one. Okay. And these are all combed? Combed, yep. Combed is the brush we're using. Yep, and then I don't even need a lot of texture down here at all, really. I'm just gonna add a little bit to the end of the foot. And down here, I think this fluffy texture is actually a nice soft texture to leave on like the underside of the, fit, the foot because it still looks a little fluffy because it's soft. Um, so I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna add some fur texture to the bottom of the feet. Okay, almost there guys. And then we're ready to start adding some fur to the inside. Okay, last layer to add edge texture to is this top layer. This one has this front foot leg and the snout. So I am going to turn off my body layer so that I can see what I'm doing. And let's start, well, actually I'm gonna start with this, the snout. Um, okay, so the hair here kind of goes like this, comes out from the nose, so I just need to keep that in mind, um, and then kind of like down around like that. There's not, what's going on? Okay, there's not a ton that I need to add here. In fact, I don't even know. This is gonna end up blending into the rest of the hair, so I'm just kind of adding some that way. And then down here, Make my brush a little bigger. And I'm gonna blend this in a little bit more later, but this this side matters a lot because this side I'm not gonna blend. So I'm just kind of adding a little bit of texture there. Yeah, this looks a little messy, but don't worry. Okay, <laughs> that's what the, the snout looks like. I'm gonna do this leg. I'm gonna make my brush size a bit bigger. And these, I wanna make the legs kind of fluffy, especially on this side, because that's where all the hair is kind of going that way. And then kind of down, a little bit more down as we get closer to the paw. And here, don't worry too much about here. This is on top of this layer, but we're gonna blend it later. Um, so don't worry about making that part furry but I do need to do a little bit on this side less than this side just a little bit see I can't see what I'm doing here either so I'm going to turn this layer off okay so now all my other layers are off except for this one but it makes it so that I can see what I'm doing and then a little bit of fur on the paw what a paw okay all right there's the leg. All right, so we've done all the edge texture. Um, we're gonna now do the texture on like overall on the fur. So do we have any questions before we move on to that, Jeff? How are we doing? Uh, we're doing, we don't have specific to okay. so where we're cool. at right now. Perfect, if you guys have questions or you want, you need to, me to clarify something, I'm happy to do so, just ask. Okay, um, so now we've set up our edge textures. We're not going to be changing the edges anymore. So we can turn on alpha lock, which pretty much what it does is it locks in this shape and we can no longer draw outside of that shape. So we're not gonna alter our beautiful hair edges that we already made. So we're just gonna turn on alpha lock. There's a couple ways you can do it. Tap, tap alpha lock, 
you'll see this checkerboard pattern behind the layer preview, or you can take two fingers and swipe to the right, which is my preferred way because it's faster. So I turned on alpha lock on the three layers that we used to make the cat. And we're gonna start with the cat body and tail. We're actually gonna start with the tail. We did just get one really good question. Yeah. Um, someone said that my flicks look either enormous or non-existent. How are you getting your wispy ones that you were doing on those edges? Well, play around with your brush size, but it also comes with control and practice. Like I have a lot of practice doing the right amount of pressure to do it. So I would practice um, like off to the side or something like that so you can see what you're getting because it might frustrate or frustrate you if you're over here trying to do it and it's not coming out, but practice a little bit off to the side and then try to apply it over here. Um, also check your pressure curve, which is in the actions menu under preferences, under edit pressure curve. This is what it looks like by default, but if you notice that it's like doing something weird and your strokes are not coming out right, you can just reset it. I set all my brushes up to be in a default pressure curve. So if it's anything other than that, you might not have the same results. And then um, a couple of people actually asked, why are we putting fur on the body right now when it's the same color? You will see in just a minute. Basically is um, now we can come in here willy nilly and like add strokes to add all the texture that we want. And if you, if, you, if you didn't have alpha lock and you were trying to add all the like colored texture and all the, you know, you might mess up these and it'll get too, like if I, let me try, don't do this. I'm just gonna show you. If I kept coming in here and I'm trying to add in fur color, just pretend. It's gonna like take away my beautiful fur edge that I set up. So that's why. It'll make more sense as we continue on. But that's a really good question. Okay, alpha lock. Any other questions before we continue? Let's get started. And then, uh, but what brush are we gonna be starting with now? I will tell you. Um, first, I'm going to, I'm gonna just make my sketch. I wanna keep my sketch on, but I'm just gonna reduce the opacity so I don't see it as much. Okay, we're moving on to a new brush. This one is called Combed Dark. And what this brush does is anytime you, make sure I'm on the right layer, make sure you're on the right layer. We're going to the cat body layer. Um, <laughs> anytime you lay, layer strokes and continue layer strokes, it will get darker and 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 darker. And darker, and darker. Like that, that's the, that's the effect that this brush has. And it's very handy for doing what we're gonna do with this fur. Okay, so we're gonna start with the tail. And basically what we're doing now is we're gonna add in kind of like an overall fur texture and establish where the direction of all the fur all over the whole body. Okay, so I like to start on the ends. I like to swoop this way. So that's why I'm rotating my canvas because it's a lot harder for me to go like that than it is to go like this. <laughs> That's what's great about digital arts. You could just turn it around. Okay, and so I am now adding in some lines and I'm making sure to follow, like obey the same direction that I've set up here. But then I'm also filling in the middle too. So, there, just watch me for a second and then I'll... So I'm getting the edges. They're going the same direction that I've set up, but I'm also filling in the middle. And the way that, especially for this tail, kind of what I like to do is have them all like go up and then the sides kind of go out. So you'll see me do that here. So I'm kind of going out. Again, this is following these lines in the edge that I've already set up. So I'm kind of like, in a sense, coloring them in. And I'm doing very light strokes. That's why it's coming out so like light and dainty. If I did heavy, it would look like that. So I'm just doing really light strokes. And my brush size is 45%. Which brush are we using? This is Combed Dark. Combed and Dark. What was the color? How did we change oh, the color? That, you know, I didn't even mention that because we didn't change our color at all. So it's basically doing a darkened version of whatever color we had selected. So if I layer this on top of this color I already made, it'll multiply. It's got a multiply blend mode baked right into the brush. So it's self darkening. 
So you don't have to change the color, but I will tell you about manipulating the colors, which we'll do a little bit later. Because right now I don't have to change the color, but if you needed to for certain reasons, which I'll explain in a bit, you can. So again, really light strokes. I'm kind of up here, out to the sides, up in the middle, out to the sides. And they kind of have a little bit of a curve to them, my little strokes. They're not just like perfectly straight, so. So fur, it is time consuming. It's more than other types of textures, I would say. But it's kind of therapeutic, you guys, like just to sit and like stroke, 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 put in some good music. Listen to me babble. <laughs> So we're setting up a base texture, essentially, is what we're doing right now. Look at that. See, it already is starting to look fluffy. This looks unfinished still because it is unfinished, but it's already starting to look like furry, almost like you could touch it. Now, will this work if we do this with clipping mask instead of uh, alpha lock? Um, no, for a specific reason, because, um, don't follow along, but I'll tell you what. If I were to do, <coughs> if I, sorry, <laughs> T, can't talk. Mm, so sorry. Um, if you were to <coughs> paint over nothing like this, it would start out this color, and then like when you added another stroke over it, it would, it just doesn't look as clean. Um, so I don't recommend doing a clipping mask for this. Plus your first stroke, if you did a clipping mask, oops, if you did a clipping mask, your first stroke wouldn't show up because the first time you lay down a stroke with this dark brush and there's nothing underneath it, it's the this color, it's this color. And then the second time you lay a stroke, it gets darker. And so like you can see that it just doesn't look good. So that's why I recommend doing it this way. It's a very painterly style, and when you do a painterly style, you don't like use a ton of layers and clipping masks and things like that. Um, you just keep working it until it looks the way you want. So that's what we're doing. Don't worry, it will look good. Okay, so when I'm doing fur, and, I, and this is why I started with the tip of the tail, is I start not where the fur comes from, but where the fur ends, and then I work my way backwards. So that's what I'm doing here. So the cat, like the, the hair starts at the nose and then it comes down. So I'm starting at the butt for this part. And I'm just kind of, again, obeying these fur directions I set up, but now I'm kind of like giving the body some contour. I'm gonna make the brush bigger. Okay. And the more your brush strokes kind of do this, it'll look more fluffy but I kind of want the hair to be nice and flat here. So you could do it this way if you want, but it's up to you. Maybe I'll do a little bit. And even if this, like this, this first base of fur doesn't have to look perfect either, but you want to definitely start to establish some texture in the right directions and where you want, how you want it to look. Okay, so there's the body. I'm just kind of going back and forth and a little bit of a little bit of curve, but not too much. And now here, again, following this direction of fur I'm on the chest now. And I'm just working my way up, lots of little strokes. Going across here. Here's where the this is like the other layer of the foot, and we'll blend that in later. So we don't have to worry about too much, but and then here kind of doing these like little, here I kind of curved these strokes out a little bit more. And here I'm gonna stop um, and I'm gonna move to, I'm actually gonna start here because I think for the face it's easier if you um, start at the nose and kind of work your way out just so you make sure you have, you're going the right direction. So I'm gonna make my brush size smaller. Do we have any questions before I work on the face? Um, there's just a people who were having issues with their comb dark working. Um, and I was just suggesting to try. I think if you do not have any color in your color, if you're just pure white, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. Um, so make sure, and if you want to just very gradually add some color and darkness, you can go to the value. 
color picker, and my color is 8% of the orangey color I have selected and 93% um, bright brightness. Um, so you need to have a little bit of color, a little bit of darkness. White colors are a little tricky like that. That's why I didn't start with a bright white, perfect white. Um, we can, we're going to come back and add some like really white tones later, but make sure you have white. Otherwise this multiply effect that's built in the brush won't do anything because there's no color to, on which to build upon. You can't multiply by zero people. We learned that in math class. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna make my brush size smaller because the hairs on the face are a little smaller. And I'm just going to just lay out where I want this face to go. It's gonna kind of come out from the nose, curve around the eyes like that. Okay, can you guys see that? I know it's so light, it might be hard to see. Why to pick a white cat, I don't know. I just did. And then here, we're gonna come around the eyes like that. So the hair is gonna curve around the eyes, kind of like that. And then, then it's gonna kind of go like this. So I'm gonna go a little bit bigger, the brush. Let's do this. Tell me how it's feeling for you guys. I want to know if this is like how, how it's feeling. If it's hard to follow, if, it's, if I can explain it better, like I would love to know. And then this is going to come out kind of like that. I kind of like that. Do you guys see these kind of rounded strokes around to this fur? It's kind of going shoo like that. It's a lot of like visualizing, you know, what the hair does. And if you, again, if you have a reference that does help, I just wanted to have a full screen for you guys so you could see. Okay. What is the size of the brush that you have right now? Right now I'm doing it about 30%. And I don't really, I don't, people ask about the brush sizes and I, it makes me wonder if you guys like look and you're like, oh, 30%. Or if you just do it by eye, I do it by eye. I just like, oh, that's too small, that's too big and I change it. So I'm curious how other people do it. There's no wrong way, whatever works for you. Okay, so we've got like the overall texture direction of all the fur on the face established. Let's do the little muzzle. So this is the top layer. So the one with the front foot and the snout. Not, not, not a muzzle, not a muzzle. Okay, so this, we're gonna do some swoopy lines like that. You know, like a cat. <laughs> yeah. um, hold on, this one's gonna go, uh, I'm gonna, I want these to connect. So it's kind of like an almond shape around this little shape. So it's curved down here. So kind of like that. And then the other side. And then down at the bottom. Okay. Okay, um, on that same layer, here, there's a good look at the, at how I did the, the, sn uh, the snout, not the, whatever Jeff said it was called. <laughs> and then. The renarium. The renarium. The renarium. <laughs> <laughs> and here, I'm it gonna do the furless skin surface surrounding the external opening of the nostrils. Oh, so that's oh, so that's like the actual the, tip, the tip, the line. tip, not like the whole like no, snout. The... So it is a snout, and the renarium is like right here. You guys are learning so much about cats; you didn't really think you could ever know. Okay, but it, it, is, it is also. <laughs> It is also called muzzle. I mean, that is yeah. correct. Yeah, okay, all right. You know, you're, you're, you're okay. <laughs> all right, let's do this leg. <laughs> okay, this foot, we're going to curve the fur around. This is going to give us some contouring. Um, contouring is what makes flat things look 3D. 
and curved like this. So I'm going to make it curve around and down like that. And then that's what's great about fur is it gives contour, gives texture. It's great. It's fun. And then we're going to do the legs, kind of like the tail, where we're going to go uh, down in the middle and then like out on the sides. I'm going to go a little bit bigger as we go up. Okay. Okay, so we've got some cat, and then here I kind of want this to, we're gonna blend this these two things together in a little bit, but that's a good start. Like here, you can, it looks a little weird right there. That's okay. Okay, so we did that leg. We just have two more legs to go. So the bottom layer um, is the one with the ears, this back front paw, and this hind paw. So let's start at the bottom here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna kind of like curve it around. I don't know, this one, eh, something like that. We have fur going that way, and then it kind of curves around at the end. Doesn't have to be perfect. So that's what we got there. And lots and lots of little strokes, guys. All right, curve, maybe a smaller brush size. I'm just going down a little bit. Curve it around. Something like that. Nice curvy paw. And then we'll do the rest in the same way as the other leg. Out at the sides. Kind of like that. Okay. One more thing is these little ears. And so for these ears, um, here, I'll give you guys a minute to catch up. So I've done... Um, I've done everything, I've done the paws, I just need to do the ears. This is what it's looking like so far. If you're watching this in the future, feel free to pause at any time. If you're watching it live, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to slow down for you. If you need me to slow down or repeat things, please ask. Um, okay, so we're still on the layer with the ears. And for the ears, I'm sticking, so I have this line that in my sketch, which is like the side of the ear. So that's gonna be like darker. And I'm gonna darken everything up later, but I'm gonna add a lot of fur there because that's like the outside of the ear. And the rest is the inside of the ear, which is a little furry on the edges. So I'm adding some fur texture here on both edges, but mostly more here on the like side, like the furry side. And then I'm just gonna add some little like fluffy tufts the, doing that like, 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 a, like a plant would do like that. Kind of exploding. Which brush are we on right now doing this? We're still using the dark combed brush. We have not changed yet. And this is getting darker. If you notice, this is darker than anywhere else because I have layered lots of strokes. And that's how these work. If you layer and layer and layer strokes, they'll get darker. There are other ways to make things darker, which we will do, but that's one way. All right, and this side, so here we've got this line from the sketch. So this side's gonna be a lot more furry. So I'll put a lot of fur texture on that side. A little bit on this side. And a little bit in the middle of the ear, just kind of these like little fluffy tufts. Oops, I need a bigger brush size. There we go, I don't need a lot. Just the appearance of some fur texture. Like I actually think that's too much when I zoom back out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that again. All right, just a little bit. So you can see those are my <clears throat> those are my two ears. So lots of fur on the outside, a little bit of fur on the inside. Okay. All right, so that's step one of the fur. Well, step two, I guess. Step one is the edge texture. Step two is overall texture. And now we're gonna start to establish like what parts are darker and what parts are lighter. Um, so, the first thing you wanna do is imagine where your uh, light source is coming from. In my case, I'm imagining the light source is coming from this angle, like from the upper left. Um, that way the face is illuminated and stuff. It was this way, then like the face would be dark. So that's what I decided. You can decide whatever you want, but that's what I'm doing. So now I'm going to layer on some more strokes where the shadowy parts would be and darken those up. So I'm gonna go a little, let's start with the tail. 
Um, so this side of the tail would be dark. And I'm not on the right layer. <laughs> Go to the layer. Make sure you're on the right layer. Um, alpha lock is great like that because when you're on the la in the wrong layer, you know, because nothing's happening. Um, <laughs> so we're on the layer with the body. Um, same brush. We have not changed brushes. Combed dark is what we're using. And we're just going to like layer on more brush strokes just like we did before, but layer on more like towards the side. I'm doing the wrong direction. <laughs> I told you guys it's better if I rotate it. There we go. You always want to go out. I don't like to do my brush strokes in um, because the fluffy or the like softer ends are on the end of my stroke, like the whoosh, like that. So that's what I try to do. So like this direction, like that. And I'm using kind of a heavier brush, like a heavier pressure here. Kind of maybe have some of them come off that way a little bit too. But I'm. So something like that. And then maybe on the underside of the tail because there's this whole side is a little dark. This is not the only way we're going to add shadows, but it is one of the ways. And the, the, doing this versus the other way that I'm going to show you adds shadows with texture. I also have a brush that adds shadows but without texture. Like you, you can see the, the hairs and everything like that still. That probably doesn't make any sense. <laughs> A little more. I'll explain it again when we do the other kind of shading. Um, this side, this whole underside, we're gonna. I'm gonna do like a big brush stroke and just kind of paint in some dark areas. And it's okay that I'm doing bigger strokes here as long as it's following that same direction. That's fine. Okay. Let's do this side of the head. I'm gonna go a little smaller. Okay, you guys starting to see this now, like the, the shading on the side like that? Okay, um, let's do these legs. So I'm gonna go to the layer with the front leg. Question? So I was just asking, since alpha lock is on the same layer, what happens when you mess up on the fur layers and need to go back to the shaper brush step? Um, I... I'm not sure. Well, okay. Maybe whoever asked that can explain what you mean by messing up because there are things we can like, is it getting too much fur texture or like explain what it is you mean by like messing up? Because once you, I wouldn't turn on alpha lock until you were happy with the shape of your cat because uh, the shape of the fur and everything. After that, it doesn't matter. You can manipulate whatever you want within that shape. Um, but make sure that you're happy with the edges. We're not changing the edges at all. So maybe explain that a little bit more. And I'm happy to answer that because I have some ways that you can, like if you overwork your fur and stuff like that, things that you can do. All right, we're going to do this side. And his little foot a little bit, darken that up. And what else is on this layer? Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of shading here yet because that muzzle is going to be really light in the end. But I'm going to go to the layer with the ears. And I'm going to go to this foot and darken. This one's pretty dark because it's like behind everything and it's on the shadow side. So we're going to darken it more up a different way, but I'm going to darken it up with this brush a little bit. And this one here. And the ears, well, the ears will do a different way. So I think that's a good jumping off point for just starting to add some shading. And now I'm gonna show you the other way that we're gonna add shading. So I'll give you just a minute to catch up. If you need to pause the video, if you're watching in the future, go ahead. I'm gonna sip my tea. Okay. All right, so before we actually do that, I wanna move on and work on these eyes. Um, that's gonna, yeah, I wanna do that before we add the different shading. So let's do that. So we're gonna add another new layer. This layer is going to be um, underneath the snout muzzle and on top of the body. So if I select the body layer, 
and hit plus. Now this new layer is in between the muzzle and it's above the body, so in between those two layers. For the color, I'm gonna go back to the disc, that's my favorite. I'm gonna choose a nice bright blue. It's almost the same blue as the background. So I could almost sample that background color, but. Okay, and then for the brush, we're gonna go into gouache paint box and choose the painty round brush. This is the brush that, um, that was included in the all-star pack. So if you don't have this brush installed, um, you can use a different brush, like a, anything that's maybe got a little texture, but it's pretty opaque um, would work well. So you can try different brushes if you want, but nothing with like too much texture. Okay, so now we're gonna draw, get the right brush size. That's fine. Now we're gonna draw the shape of the eye. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Okay, color it in. Real quick, what was the, what, on the first layer of fur, was mm -hmm. it supposed to be white? What was the color that we were supposed um, to use? It's kind of an off-white. Um, like, it's probably hard to see it in the video, but it was, it, if this was in the orange area, it would be somewhere like really close to white, but not quite completely white. It has to have a little bit of color in it, a little bit of darkness. And I, it was like, yeah, it was, I had to rewind it, but, <laughs> okay. And, um, and one last question, why again aren't we using clipping mask? Um, I, I explained that a little bit before, but it messes up the texture and the way that the fur brushes work. So if you wanna watch that part again, um, like when this video is all done, I would definitely recommend checking out because I showed you some examples, but it doesn't make it work as well. All right, so here we go. We're gonna add this eye now. We're just coloring in the shape that we had done with our sketch. And this eye kind of rounds out here cause it's like, you can see the edge of the eye. It's not completely on the fur cause of the angle that this face is at. Yours, if you did it at a different angle, might not look exactly like that, but there is some like foreshortening happening there. Okay, all right, so these eyes now, um, we're gonna use alpha lock again. Um, we're not gonna change the shape of these eyes anymore. So that's why I'm gonna turn on alpha lock. So swipe to the right with two fingers or you can tap it and hit alpha lock. And so to do this cat eye effect, and maybe let me go back to my slides real quick. Oh, here we go. Okay, so um, to do this, like it, oh, their, their eyes almost look like gems, like like an um, you know, like a rounded gem or something. And so the light's kind of coming in and it's lighting up this bottom part and there's a shadow on this top part. So we have this kind of like gradient thing happening, which I'm gonna show you how to do right now. And this is fun. I actually did this for the first time in my metallics tutorial. It's about um, how to draw metallic objects. And we did little robot eyes that were kind of gem-like. They're fun. Um, okay, so we're gonna get a darker color than this blue. So I'm gonna get it a little bit darker, but I'm also gonna go a little bit cooler. I like to change the hue, like when I go to a darker color, I like to change the hue to like a darker hue. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to turn up my brush size. Again, I have alpha lock turned on on this layer, um, and I'm just going to kind of paint in like that, okay? And I'm gonna do it on this side as well, so that top edge. And it's a, I'm actually gonna smudge this and blend it in a little bit, so don't worry if it's like, looks too textured like that, like that's too textured for me, but I'm gonna blend it, so it's okay. Um, and then we're going to go darker, more saturated, a little cooler, okay? Or, yeah, that's cooler, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm gonna paint in that top. So we're kind of like, essentially we're like making a gradient. Okay. And then um, I'm going to smudge this with the smudge tool. So if I tap and hold the smudge tool, it will select that same brush as my smudger. So painty round is what we're using for the smudge. And you can maybe do a bigger brush size. And I'm just kind of smudging it to make it more smoother like that. Okay and this side as well. 
So we're kind of smoothing that out. But it still has a little bit of texture. That's what's great about the smudge tool. All right, back to the brush tool. We're going to add some lighter colors here. So I'm going to eye drop this blue. I am going to go to my colors. I'm gonna go lighter. And I'm gonna also go a little bit towards green, okay? I just like to include more colors when I can. I think it makes it look more dynamic. And we're gonna paint some color down on the bottom edge. Probably need to go a little bit lighter. I think the more contrast you have between the lights and the darks, the more like deep the eyes will look. Okay, all right, so there's where we're at. Then we're gonna smudge it. Again, I have the painty round as my smudge. And I'm just gonna smudge it. Wonderful. Okay, let me smudge this a little bit. Just so it looks a little smooth. I don't want it to look perfectly smooth because I don't like anything to be perfect. Um, all right, and then the next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of darkness on the bottom edge. So I'm just gonna sample this kind of like darker blue color and I'm gonna just paint in, oh, oops, that's too much. Paint in some darkness around the bottom edge like that and here as well. Don't, because this is like the side of the eye and not like this part of the eye, it's, it's kind of like this part of the eye. I don't wanna do that because that will look weird. So I'm doing that. And then um, I can smudge that in a bit. And then I'm going to actually choose a darker, more towards purple color and do that to the same thing to the top. Let me know if you're not following me on this, guys. Oops, that's too much. I just want a little bit. I want them to look deep and wonderful. And you can smudge it just a little bit, but you don't want to smudge it too much. I kind of like to look a little painterly and texturally, <laughs> texturally. Okay, there's the eyes so far. <laughs> um, we're gonna add the pupils next. Any questions about the eyes yet so far? Anybody throw any questions up, Jeff? Uh, I haven't had any for the eyes yet. Cool, no. okay. So those are the eyes. Um, we're gonna add the pupils. Those are gonna be on a new layer. We're gonna use clipping masks, you guys. <laughs> Hope you're excited. Um, hit the plus sign to create a new layer right above the eye layer. We're going to tap this layer and we're going to choose clipping mask. And then for the color, we're gonna choose a gray, like a dark gray, but not black. So that's important. So don't go too close to black. We want it to be pretty dark, but not completely black. And you'll see why in just a second. We're gonna need to use both tones in these eye pupils. So we're still on the painty round brush. Oops, okay. And we're gonna draw the pupils, whatever shape you want them to be. And they're kind of like ovals. Kind of like that. I think that looks pretty good. Always zoom out, especially when you're doing something like eye pupils um, to make sure that they look okay. And if you need to, you can adjust them. Like if I grab the selection tool, I can select this side, go to the transform tool and I can like adjust it. I think they're pretty, whoa, I think they're pretty good. Um, but that's kind of the cool thing about using a clipping mask is you can like move it all around uh, if you need to and manipulate them. Um, all the eyes were just using Still. Yeah, that's the only uh, other brush I'm going to be using other than maybe something else for the shadows if I get that far. <laughs> I know this is kind of a long tutorial, you guys. I appreciate you bearing with me, but there's some really cool stuff that we're getting to learn today. So if you can't stick around, like I said, we'll have it ready to go. Okay. All right. So we've got those pupil shapes. Now I'm going to turn on alpha lock on my clipping mask. <laughs> um, you can use these things together, which is great. So on the layer with the pupils, Alpha lock turned on. Again, I can check it. Alpha lock is turned on. And now here's where I'm going to get like my super black. Like if I sn double tap next to black, it will snap to black. That works in a lot of different spots. It's how I also get white when I need white. So if I tap near black, it'll snap to black. And I hope I didn't make my gray too dark. Cause here I'm adding like a little bit of a shadow on the pupil. 
It's a little subtle, but it makes a difference. Because it's kind of like the shadow that the like eyebrow ledge ridge gives. It gives it a little bit of touch of realism. So if you can see that, this is gray, this is black. I've added it right there. Okay. And you can even smudge that too. If, like that. All right. Okay, one more layer for the eyes. We're gonna create another new layer. We already have black selected. I'm still using painty round and I'm gonna draw the like black part that goes around the eye. Oops, that is way too big. Smaller brush size. Uh, that might work. So I'm kind of, it's thinner here and then kind of gets a little bit thicker there. And then um, here, it's thick and I kind of like, I kind of like to, there, that's what I want. I want it to like kind of like taper off here to make this kind of like cat eye shape. I didn't want it to go all the way across, but I will maybe draw a little bit here. This is totally up to you. Like how, if you want this to go all the way across and look really dark, you could like, that's a look. It's not wrong. It's just a look. You do it however you want. And then we do the same thing or a similar thing over here. Oops, too. But this one's not gonna go all the way because we have the side of the eye here. Okay, because it's like the round part. <laughs> and then we'll add a little bit of something right there maybe. No, I don't know if I like that. Maybe a little less. See, I think what's bugging me about this one eye is it's too far down. So if you ever are like, hmm, that looks weird, but I already spent all this time painting this. I don't want to start over. Liquify is your friend. I'm going to go to the layer with the eyes. It's just a little tip. Don't worry if you don't have to do this. Um, I'm going to turn off alpha lock because you have to have alpha lock off to use liquify. And you go up to the adjustments menu, liquify. I like to use the push and you can adjust your brush size. So it's, yeah, that's way too big. And I can just like push that up a little bit. You see? So if I, I think I can preview, reset. Yeah, see the difference? So if it's looking a little off, that's a way that you can adjust your stuff without having to redo everything. <laughs> I love liquify. Okay, last thing for these eyes. Oops, I gotta add in my little black right here. Okay, last thing for these eyes is a catch light. So I'm gonna choose white, and I'm just gonna draw in a little, oops, what layer? I'm not on the right layer. I'm actually, I'm gonna do this on the layer with the black, like this eye uh, surround, I, I don't know, eyelashes. <laughs> it's not eyelashes, but there we go. And the catch lights should mirror, like they should be the same angle and stuff. So these should be at least pretty similar. It's pretty close. <gasps> look at those eyes. Yay. <laughs> the cat looks totally unfinished, but the eyes look great. <laughs> All right. Cool. If you have any questions about the eyes, let me know. Um, we're going to move on and add some other coloring to the cat. How are we doing? Okay. Um, so one of the things that I need to do is, like I said, we're doing this kind of like ragdoll breed of a cat, and they have a very specific coloring around their face. So I am gonna pull up a reference photo for that. Um, I could already have it, I already have it loaded up, but I'll redo it. Here, I'm gonna create a new tab. Okay, so I'm gonna type in ragdoll cat. Oh, I can't type today. Ragdoll cat. And I forgot to do the split screen view. So let me show you how to do that. Um, swipe up from the bottom until you get your dock. Take Safari and drag it over here. And then resize it. Reese, Reese, Reese. Huh. <laughs> Come on. Oh my goodness. Maybe you have to do that first. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so let me refresh the search. Okay. Ragdoll cat, go to images. And I want one that shows off that coloring. There's a, like, there's a lot of variations in the coloring that you could do. 
from cat to cat, but I like this one. So this is the cat that I'm gonna be looking at. And I probably should have done this when I did my sketch, but I'm gonna do it now. So I'm gonna go back to my sketch layer. I'm gonna make it a little darker so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna grab like a black, blackish gray and a pencil brush. So what basically what I'm doing is like I'm I'm laying out where I want the coloration to go. So it kind of goes like this for that part. And then around the snout. This is a lot smaller of a snout than this cat, obviously, but that's how I chose to stylize it. There's like a really dark area and then there's kind of like a lighter gray. So I'm drawing the really dark part, which kind of goes up over the eye, up here, kind of like that. And then this side too, and maybe we'll do it like that. Okay, so this is like the darkest part and then like it kind of fades off. So I'm just, this is what the second line is for, is like that part that kind of fades off. So this is just giving me guides as I add in the coloring to my cat, okay? Another thing to notice about this cat is their ears are really, really dark. So we'll make sure we do that. Um, their back, their like chest is kind of white and their back's like a little bit more multicolored. And it, again, it depends on the breed. So you can do whatever you want. Like this kitty is, this is a really like desaturated photo, has a really dark tail. The coloring is a little bit different. It's a lot fluffier. So just whatever you want to do, but. What layer are we on? I'm on my sketch layer. I just went to my sketch layer and I got my pencil brush and I just added in some guides for this. This is just to give me a guide of what to do. This isn't on my actual furry illustration layer, okay? I should have done that in the beginning, but I forgot, I'm sorry. <laughs> Where's the cat I liked? There it is. Okay, I wanna keep that up on the screen as we work. All right, so I'm gonna reduce the opacity of that sketch a little bit now. Okay, we're gonna go back to the layer with the body. So we're on the body layer again. And we're gonna go to the, we're gonna go to the fur and fluff set. We're gonna choose a different brush now. All the way at the bottom, there is a brush called Shadows. And this is a soft brush similar to the Shaper brush. It's got, but it's a little bit different. Um, this brush darkens in the same way that the dark brushes do. So the more you layer strokes, the darker and darker it will get. Like, hold on. Oh geez, here. The more I layer the strokes, the darker and darker it will get. So that's how it works. So we're gonna use that brush to add all these, and it's a little bit transparent too, so that's gonna be helpful. Okay, so we're gonna use it to add this colors. So I'm gonna go over to kind of orangey, orangey color, and um, I'm gonna start with a, let's start with a color like that. So I'm about at, oh, what is this? Nine o'clock, but up a little bit. <laughs> so that's the color that I'm choosing. Um, and I'm just gonna try it out and see if it's the right color. I'm gonna go make it smaller. So I think that's that's the right tone. Like if I added more color to this, it would look more brown, you know, like more vibrant. Uh, and if I did less color, it would be more gray. So you kind of want to see what tone you want to do. But I think what I had before, which was this one, was pretty good. So I'm just basically going to go in and color in the markings. And I'm doing one continuous stroke here because again, like I said, the more you pick up your um, your brush and layer, they'll get darker and darker. So I'm trying to do it one continuous. And then here near the edge, I'm doing really light motions to soften because I want here to be nice and sharp. Like, look at that cat. Um, but here on the edge, it kind of like fades off. So here too, I'll do that. It's really soft little circles, but here darker. Okay, that was all one stroke <laughs> to do that first laying down of the color. And then I can come in and layer more, but I think what I'm gonna do is add a little bit more, just a little bit more darkness, a little bit more color to it. The more, the darker the brushes, the faster it will get darker when you add new strokes. So, 
kind of nice and soft around the edges. This is the part that takes a little bit of finesse, but it'll look really cool. So nice soft strokes here. And now I'm gonna go even wider and add, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the brush stroke a little, a size a little bit bigger. The softer the brushes, the softer, or the bigger the brushes, the softer the edge of this, the like what you lay down will be. And then here. Okay, we're, we're getting there. I'm gonna go a little bit more. The more I add strokes, the darker to be. So I'm gonna add some dark strokes like around the eyes. Which layer are we on right now? We are on the one with the body. So we're adding, and yes, I know that some of the hair texture is starting to fall off now, but we're gonna be using that lightning brush, which we haven't even used yet to add that in. So I'm just kind of darkening like around the eyes a little bit so they look like they're sitting in the head of the cat. <laughs> Maybe darken it here too. Okay. So I think that's looking pretty good. Um, all right, we're gonna add some more fur texture to the cat overall now, but I think that looks pretty good as far as the coloring goes. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do the ears while we're at it because it's a similar color. Go to the layer with the ears and the foot and we're gonna use that same brush. Actually, I'm gonna make the brush size even bigger a little bit. And I'm sorry, which brush is this? This is the shadows brush that's included at the very bottom of that set. And I, what I love is this nice soft fall off that we get like on the inside of the ears. Like see that nice soft, I love it. I love it. So I'm actually painting like off to the side. So it's just getting the edge of this, um, just getting that nice soft edge. And then I'm gonna layer a bunch of strokes on the cat ear so it'll get nice and dark so far looking good I love it okay so you see how the cat ears are nice and dark um I'm gonna add a little bit of pink see there's a little bit of pink in there I can do it with the same brush I just need to go and find like a really light pink color like that so like super light I'm about at three o'clock here and like, what is that? I don't know, 10, 11? <laughs> and then, oops, I'm gonna go a little bit smaller with my brush size. Just painting a little bit of pink, right? Oh, that's so perfect, yes. Just painting a little bit, nice and soft. There you go. Okay, a um, couple other spots we wanna add some dark areas to. Um, I'm gonna just sample this color that's in the middle. Like I just kind of sampled where the fur is and anything in that tone range is probably gonna work well for this. I'm gonna go back to the cat body and I'm still using the shadows brush and I'm just gonna add some shadows here. I think I'm gonna actually make it less saturated when I do this. So that's how, so this is how I kind of control the colors. Like if it's like, oh, I don't like the way the color is looking with this brush. It doesn't work exactly like a normal brush, um, but this is how you can control things. So I'm adding some shadows in here. What's nice is it darkens everything at the same rate, if that makes sense. <laughs> I'm gonna add some shadows here. Maybe under the butt. And it's okay to go a little bit darker than you think you need to go because we're gonna come in with the light brush and like lighten everything up a little bit. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. And let's do the other layers too. So we'll do the one with the, this foot, adding some shadows with this soft shadows brush. So that's what's great about this brush is you can use it for coloring things or you can use it to add shadows to things. Here on the other side of the paw. Here on the very underside of the paw, there's always a really dark shadow like right underneath the ground. Like if it's touching the ground, there's gonna be really dark shadow there. So I'm gonna darken that up quite a bit. 
still pretty good. Blend it a bit. Okay. And I will blend this, don't worry. <laughs> um, what else is on this layer? The muzzle, I'll come back to that. Um, the, the layer with the ears now, I'm on the layer with the ears and this like back foot. So I'm gonna use this brush to darken it quite a lot actually. Make it nice and dark in there. And then down at the bottom of the foot. So we're still using that same- The shadows shadow brush. brush, yep. Yeah. Okay, nice and dark. It really will help ground whatever thing you're drawing is if you add this dark spot at the bottom. This definitely needs to get darkened. And we'll also do that. Okay. And you can always come back and darken it more if you need to. Um, okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, let's add, let's come and do some light colors now. So we're going to change brushes now and we're going to go back to the combed brushes and we're gonna choose the light brush. I told you guys, this drawing, <laughs> it's a bit more time intensive, but it'll really help you learn a lot of skills if you go through all of this. But you know, learning skills takes time, so that's what we're doing. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the layer with the cat body. And now, this brush, automatically, it'll lighten and lighten and lighten and lighten is the more that you layer stroke. So it just does the opposite of what the, um, what the dark brush does. So if these strokes are coming out a little too white, like these are like lightning really intensely, um, I can change the color to something a little bit darker. Again, if I go more saturation, it'll infuse more color and saturation into it, um, just like I was kind of explaining with that other brush. So I think that's a little better. These little fine adjustments will help. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm very lightly adding in some highlights to this dark part. And then on this side, I'm being a little more heavy handed and letting it um, darken or lighten more, <laughs> so to speak. Because I don't want to lighten this up too much, but I do want to add a little bit of highlights to these dark areas. And then over here, it's going to be a lot. So this definitely takes a little bit of finesse too. In my Skillshare class, it's not quite this, um, <laughs> uh, it's a little bit easier to, I think, of a illustration. So if you really wanna like learn and you wanna jump in in an easy way, that is a really great class to take. This is kind of a little bit more intermediate, I would say. <laughs> um, so I'm just kind of layering on a little bit of the light strokes everywhere but more so where it's light and less where it's dark. Okay, and then let's go here too. And this is like mostly white cat, so it's okay that most of it's pretty light. Just down here, it's gonna be dark. So I'm just layering on a few little strokes. Try to make it a little bit bigger. And these are like the highlights of the fur. And I do talk about more like what makes fur look like fur in that Skillshare class and stuff too. So now I'm gonna come in and do it even more here. So we're starting to get some more shape and volume to this cat now that we're adding in like highlights. So that's why it's okay if you started with, oops, you started with um, not a white color to begin with because now we're adding in white now. Okay, let's add a little bit down here and add some light spots here. Especially on these, like when you add light over dark areas, it really starts looking fluffy. You don't like things that are lighter in color don't look as fluffy as sometimes things that are darker or mid, mid tones because you can't see all those shadows and stuff. 
All right, so there we've got that. Okay, we're gonna do this spot. A little bit over here. Again, I'm kind of working my way towards where the hair emanates from. And then here I'm gonna start. With the smaller brush size, I'm over, um, I'm moving on to like the face now. Smaller brush size. And especially on these dark areas, I don't wanna add in too much cause it'll just like, if, see like it'll take away from that dark color. So I'm just adding some really light furry areas. Kind of following the um, direction of the hair that I have established. A little bit bigger brush size. Come around. See how like nice that's starting to look? I love it. Do this side. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, another thing I wanna do here is I wanna blend, like this is a very soft shape and I wanna make the transition from light to dark look more furry shaped. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use a smudge tool for this. Um, so if I tap and hold on the smudge tool, it's gonna again select the brush, whatever I had selected as my brush, it will select as the um, smudge tool, which in this case, any of these three combed brushes would work. Doesn't matter um, because it's smudge. The light or dark doesn't matter. And I can like smudge some of this light up into the dark a little bit. And like I can, well, I don't have any other, like if there were more of a transition where it goes back from dark to light, you can kind of smudge them into each other like that. I think this would just a little bit. So it's less, a little less um, of that kind of soft edge and more of like a furry edge. This is like very subtle stuff, but it will, it'll make a difference. And another thing you can do with the smudge tool is if you find that like, it's starting to get a little too much, like transitions from like, this is getting a little messy. You can um, use your smudge tool to kind of, Clean it up a little bit. That's what I like to do. If it's getting a little bit too much, I can kind of like use the smudge tool to clean it up. If it just looks like this, maybe there's too much contrast, I can use the smudge tool to clean it up a little bit. Or there's one other thing that you can do, uh, which I'll show you now. Okay, <laughs> here, I'm gonna do a little bit here. This is totally up to you. This is like where you're like, oh, do I need to keep working on this or is it okay? But this is just something you can do. I'm just showing the, you this as a tool that you can use if things aren't, it's, if it's looking a little too messy, like you wanna kind of soften the fur texture a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna whiten up some of the areas. If, if this is, uh, there's too much contrast between the light and the dark furs, you can paint over it a little bit. So I'll show you that real quick. Um, I'm gonna go to the shaper brush I'm gonna select white. So I have the shaper brush from the fluff and fur and fluff, fur and fluff, uh, and I have white as my color. I'm gonna make the brush size a bit bigger and I'm gonna take the opacity almost, like this is at like 30% or so. And I can like paint white over this and that'll make it a little less contrasty. So if there's ever areas where it just like the fur got to be so intense, like too much, too furry, <laughs> you can always paint over it with white or another color too. Like I could come in with a color similar to this. I just select a color from there and I can paint over it with a low opacity to just kind of like tone it down like that. Okay, and I'm gonna get my white again. Kind of whiten this area, especially here where I had the different coloring and things like that. Um, here on the tail. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't want to spend too much time um, doing stuff like that, but I just wanted to show you that you can do that. 
because we need to give this little kitty a nose and then I think we'll be done. So we're gonna create a new layer at, above all the other layers. And we're gonna choose a nice like pink. This is kind of a warmish pink, uh, just above three o'clock, about right there. And I'm going to choose the gouache paint box, that painty round brush again. That's the one we used to do the eyes. And I think this brush pairs really well with this fur texture. Like they both have kind of that painterly feel to them. So that's why I really like using it to go with the fur brushes. All right, we're gonna color in the nose. So cute. Um, and then I'm just looking at this nose kind of as a reference. Once I've got the shape all set up of my nose, I can turn on alpha lock and I can start shading it and making it look like I want, like I'm gonna get a little bit of a darker pink, kind of darken the bottom a little bit. You know, you can make it look as real as you want to, just by kind of like seeing how it looks there. But I don't know, I'm gonna smudge that a little, oops. Smudge it with my painty round brush. And maybe with like, I'll get an even darker color to do like these little nostrils. So I'm going even darker. And just kinda, I think they look too big. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, it's fine. They're a little bit big, but that's fine. Um, and then there's kind of like a dark line down the middle, something like that. And I can even, um, I kind of want to maybe soften the top edge so I could erase part of it away with like my shaper brush, which is a soft edge. Just kind of soften the top of the nose. I think that looks good. So, um, let's do the mouth shape. I'm just gonna get like a, that kind of pinkish color. It's a little bit dark. And my painty round brush again. Oops, I have alpha lock turned on. Turn off alpha lock now so I can add more stuff to this layer. Maybe that's a little bit too dark. What do you guys think? Okay, <laughs> this is pretty good. On this same layer, I'm gonna add some um, little dots that are gonna be where the whiskers are gonna go. So for the whiskers, I'm gonna choose like a grayish color. We'll see how it looks. Just some little dots like that. And this is where the whiskers are gonna come out. And then for the whiskers, I'm gonna I'm gonna put those on a new layer in case I need to erase them or if I mess it up. I'm gonna choose white as my color. I'm still using the painty round brush, but at a pretty small size, and I'm just gonna do these, maybe a little bigger. Well, those like swoopy marks. Maybe it's too big. <laughs> there we go. So you can make your kitty whiskers look however you want. I think they're I'm just doing a nice swooping line. Ah. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> I would probably change that a little bit, but I'm gonna turn off my sketch layer now so I can really get a look at how, how it's looking. I know I said I was gonna blend this in, so I'll do that now. Um, let's go to the layer with that, which is this one. It has this muzzle and it has um, this shape. So. To do this, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn off alpha lock. So this is really helpful if you have, like you wanna separate things out, but you also need them to look like they're blended in together. One of the things you could do is you can get the smudge tool and set it to the, the texture of the fur, whatever texture you're using. So in this case, combed. And you can um, kind of smudge, like I'm kind of smudging that shape away if that makes sense. I'm like smudging it, the edges of the shape down and revealing what's behind it, which is this, you know, the cat body. So it kind of gives the effect that I'm uh, 
you know, that that hair is on top of that. <laughs> Let me know if that doesn't make sense. I'll try to explain it better, but that's a way that I can use to like kind of blend that together. And you can also use the smudge to smudge in, you know, blend these little areas together. And, you know, you can keep working at it as long as, as you want to. But um, one thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this foot. <laughs> so I think it needs two. Um, I'm going to select this foot with the selection tool. I'm on the layer that has this foot. Swipe down with three fingers um, and hit duplicate. And then I can, oops, I can move that. So now he has two feet. <laughs> That's a quick way to do it. Which brush do you use for the whiskers? Oh, I use Painty Round, just at a really small size. Okay, do you guys want me to show you how to do the drop shadow too? Or are we are we good to keep going? What do you guys think? Um, yeah, when I did my other one, I, I probably spent a little bit more time kind of judging it a little bit, like maybe coming in and adding some more light fur strokes and things like that. But I, you know, don't want to keep you on here forever. So, you know, you can continue working on it until you feel good about it and you feel done. But don't, you know, don't overwork it. I think this also looks great too. So <laughs> I, I don't need to keep going, but um, drop shadow. Why not? Or keep going with it. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I'm going to get rid of that. So this is our finished kitty cat. If you want, you can add a background and things like that. Um, I do do drop shadows in other videos, so you can see that. But I'm really, I think it's really fun. You learn a lot of really cool techniques like fur, how to do this cool like glassy eye look, um, how you can use just one brush to do a lot of different things. So um, I hope you had fun. I'm just gonna real quick go back to my slides. Um, this is my, my class on fur that you can take on Skillshare where we go into doing, we do this sloth, this duck. I have a time lapse of this cool fox. There's also um, a llama with a fluffy texture that you can learn how to do. So if you want to take that, you can get two weeks of Skillshare for free using my link that's in the description. Jeff will share it in the comments. But it's a really great class. We've gotten a lot of really awesome feedback from it. Um, lots and lots of people have taken it and given it really great reviews, which makes my heart happy. So thank you so much for that. Uh, if you do take it, I recommend, um, posting a project so you can share your work with others. Um, I would love to see them as well. That's a really great way for me to give you feedback, or if you want feedback, feel free to reach out. Um, it's really fun. Um, and this is just, um, I'm just going to throw it up on the screen. So if you want to pause it and see, See this, this is how you control the lightness or darkness of um, those brushes, the lightning or darkening brushes. And I go into this into more detail in the Skillshare class, so you can check it out. But this is just a little thing that you can look at. Okay, <laughs> I would love to see what you guys have made. Um, if you follow this tutorial and you're posting your work on Instagram, please do tag me so that I can see it. Um, use the hashtag Bardo Brush. Um, my Instagram account is at Bardo Brush. And also use the furry, BB Furry Cat. Use that as your hashtag as well so I can see like all the kitties all together at once. And you can go and go to that hashtag and you see what other people have done. Um, so hashtag BB Furry Cat so I can see your work. Um, and really quick, um, we'll take a couple questions. If you guys have any questions, just throw them up now. I'm just gonna talk to you real quick about the Making Art Every Day Challenge, and then I'll answer a few questions, and then we will call it a day. Um, so Making Art Every Day is a series of daily drawing prompts, tutorials and resources, um, motivational emails, and a supportive community, all with the goal of helping you establish a daily art making practice. Uh, each month we have a theme, and each week there's like a sub-theme within that theme, and this year we've been working on building different skills, so um, as often as I can... Um, at least a few times a month, we work on a specific skill. And this past week, we were working on drawing fur. And so everybody was making all these really amazing furry drawings and really working on that skill. And it's, it's a really great thing to participate in if you want to learn to draw better. And I try to guide you through the process of, of developing different skill sets within drawing and digital art. Um, and things like that. So you can join at bardobrush.com slash join M-A-E. It's really fun. It's completely free. 
Um, there's lots of tutorials and the we have a Facebook group and everybody in there is so awesome. Shout out to my Facebook group. You guys are like the nicest people ever. Okay, <laughs> do we have any questions? Um, so I was asking, how did you duplicate the foot? Oh, that's a great question. Um, all I did, so I went to the layer that had the feet, so it had the ears and these two feet. I selected that area of the canvas. So I'll do it again real quick. I selected the area of the canvas. And if you swipe down with three fingers, that'll pull up the copy paste menu. And then I just hit duplicate. And that duplicated that one area I had selected. And then I just moved it over. So, and if you didn't want them to look completely identical, you could go work it some more, but... I think it looks better with the two feet there. Um, where do you find the pressure curve adjustment? Good question. That is in, oops. So that's in the actions menu, which is the wrench. Prefs, which is a little toggle button. And it's under edit pressure curve. You can experiment with it. If you feel like you have a really heavy hand when you draw, you might want to adjust it. Or if you feel like you have a very light touch when you draw, you might want to adjust it the other way. I forget which way is what, but experiment <laughs> and you'll get the right way that works for you. Uh, someone's asking, how do I get a realistic look on my drawings? I mean, I think this tutorial helps you. Um, like this is kind of a realistic fur texture with a very stylized cat body shape and like proportions and things like that. But if the more that you study a reference and work at your drawing, like trying to get it to look like that, you know, it'll, it'll look more realistic. I prefer a more stylized look myself. So that's why most of my drawings have that. And this is kind of like my foray into realism, <laughs> like step baby steps into it. Um, but yeah, it, it's all a matter of, of studying your references and really working on the skills to develop that particular texture, like what that texture looks like. Like we've been really working on fur, but what do scales look like? What does wood look like? How can I depict that? Um, I don't do a lot of realism, so there are, I'm sure, lots of YouTube teachers and Skillshare teachers that do more realism type work in their teaching. Um, so maybe look for that. <laughs> um, how would you uh, incorporate more than one color into the eyes, like green and yellow flecks or those kinds of things? Yeah, you know, you could have like started with a base color and then like I could have done different colors at the top and the bottom. As long as these colors are darker and these colors are lighter, like if this was like a bright yellow, the background is green, this was I don't know, blue, you know, you could do different things. So I would experiment with that. You know, you could also play around with gradient maps, which is kind of fun, um, which is in, I've got the eye layer selected. So I go to adjustments, gradient map, layer, <laughs> and you can play with gradient maps. Like this is pretty, like, look at that. That's cool. Um, that's a gradient map that I made. But I do talk about gradient maps in that robot um, metallics tutorial that I mentioned. So you can learn about doing that like this. And this is a good guide because you're like, oh, I could do like a teal here and then like a kind of aqua and then a purple up here. Like it gives you some good ideas of colors that you can mix and you can experiment. Like this one maybe doesn't work as well, but the green one's kind of cool. <laughs> so. Yeah, how do we reset <laughs> Any more questions? Um, there. What's the difference with blending with a brush or without any brush? I'm not sure. About I'm that. not sure about that yeah, question. And then someone was asking about um, colors and complementary colors and how you decide what colors to go with each other. Mm, that's a big question. <laughs> um, you know, the only quick tip I could probably give is just like, I would experiment with color palettes and you'll find colors that you love the way that they look together. Like I love this blue and I think it looks good with a lot of different colors, but I especially love it with pink and orange and um, yellow. Like that color palette is my favorite. 
but um, that's a that's I think probably too big of a question to to answer. Um, but just play around with colors. Look at look at pictures with different color palettes. See what you like. Um, I keep a Pinterest board of like inspirational colors that I'm just like, oh, I love the way all those colors look together. So. Last question. Someone's just asking about when do I know to replace my uh, pencil tip? Oh, if it feels like scratchy or if there's any like gray or black showing, you'll know. Like I, I use the same one for like a couple years. <laughs> so I guess it just depends on how hard you uh, press. I don't know. Uh, some people use that paper-like tech, you know, procreate thing or screen protector. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it's been a long tutorial guys. <laughs> um, and that some people complain about that wearing down. I use matte glass and it's super smooth. I like the smooth texture. So I don't, maybe that's why it doesn't wear out so fast. Well, I guess one last thing, how would I crop this? So say maybe I wanted it square. Oh, that's a great question. Okay. Go to the adjust. No, go to the actions menu. Go to Canvas, Actions menu is the wrench, Canvas, Crop and Resize. You can just do that if you want and make it the size you want, or you can go up to Settings and you can set in the like actual pixels of what you want it to be. So if you want it to be square, these two would just have to match, like these two width and height. But that's a really good question because I think it looks great, Crop Square. So, All right, you guys, <laughs> that was a big one. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm hoping to do more, more live tutorials going forward. Um, I have something next month that you guys have been asking for for a year and a half, two years. <laughs> <laughs> year and a half, year and a half. You guys, we're going to be doing more people skills next month. And I'm going to finish the people skills series. So if you guys have been around on YouTube for a while, you know <laughs> that I made this amazing set, if I do say so myself, series of tutorials about drawing people, but I got so burnt out that I couldn't finish it. And it's been, you know, like pandemic and kids and all kinds of stuff. So I didn't get to finish it, but it's going to happen next month. So stay tuned. Uh, again, I'm Bardo Brush. Check out Making Art Every Day. Have a great day. Have a great week. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>